Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland and I'm about to read a poem by Byron. I discovered when I was 16, when um, I was absolutely crazy about uh, the romantic poets, not meaning as in romantic love, though there is a bit of that, but uh, primarily their um, attitude to nature, to life, to rejecting um, overly formal uh, poetry. Uh, although they did write in sonnets sometimes, and uh, their, their embrace of, of radicalism in all its forms. Um, so this is part of a much longer narrative poem, Child Harold's Pilgrimage, uh, which Byron wrote, uh, which um, is um, well almost like a roman à clé in, in, in verse form about um, his, vo his, his travels around um, much of Europe. So Child Harold, Harold means himself, and it was absolutely smash hit when it was uh, published. So I remember reading it in the United States when I was there, and obviously casting my, my, my mind back to the British Isles and saying, oh, well, I wish I'd written this because it would describe my situation just a little. Anyway, here it is, um, this excerpt from Child Harold's Pil Pilgrimage. Adieu, adieu, my native shore, by George Gordon, Lord Byron. Adieu, adieu, my native shore, fades o'er the water blue. The night winds sigh and the breakers roar and shrieks upon the wild sea mew. Yon sun that sets upon the sea, we follow in his flight. Farewell a while to thee, my native land, good night. A few short hours and he will rise to give the morrow birth, and I shall hail the male and the main and skies, but not my mother earth. Deserted is my own good hall, its hearth is desolate. Wild weeds are gathering on the wall, my dog howls at the gate. And now I'm in the world alone, upon the wide, wide sea. But why should I for others groan, when none will sigh for me? Perchance my dog will whine in vain, till fed by stranger hands. But ere I come back again, he'd tear me where he stands. With thee, my bark, I'll swiftly go, athwart the foaming brine. Nor care what land thou bear'st me to, so not again to mine. Welcome, welcome, ye dark blue waves, and when you fail my sight, welcome ye deserts and ye caves, my native land. Good night. So um, you can hear my penny's worth uh, of exegesis of this uh, piece of poesy. Um, so adieu is obviously goodbye. That's, that's French, as in literally to God. But that fell out of use um, in the mid-19th century in English. My nature sure, because obviously he's born in Great Britain, in London to be more specific, though he was um, partly a Scot, he spent a lot of his early childhood in, in Aberdeenshire. The title Lord Byron was an English one. There'd been a Lord Byron fighting on the Royalist side in the English Civil War in the 1640s. Um, fades o'er the water blue. O'er is over, because it's, it's, it's passing out of sight, beyond the horizon. The night winds sigh, okay, so personifying them, and the breakers roar, breakers being the waves as they break, so... Um, these are, this is more onomatopoeia, and shrieks the wild wind mew. Um, all right, so again, personifying these things, so it really vivifies it. The yon sun sets upon the sea. So yon, that one, far away. We follow in his flight. So the sun sets in the west. They're sailing to the west. Now he's going to France, I thought, but, you know, maybe not just due south, south and west. Um, uh, farewell a while to him and thee, my native land, good night, because you're not going to see the sun, it's going down. A few short um, hours and he will rise, okay, it'll be daytime, to give the morrow birth, the morrow meaning tomorrow, okay, as the sun rises, the new day is born. And I shall hail the main and skies. So to hail is to greet um, with, um, well, respect um, and uh, adulation. The main, the main meaning the sea in this case, um, and, but not my mother earth. So when the sun comes up, his homeland will be out of sight. Deserted is my own good hall with a capital H. So his house, and it was a very large and sturdy one because he was a man of great consequence. It's hearth as desolate, heart being the fireplace. Remember, he's writing this 200 years ago where they didn't have central heating. So your fireplace mattered. Uh, but a hearth also symbolized the home. Wild weeds are gathering on the wall, okay? So no one's going to look at, look after it. That's odd that it would be weed grown. My dog howls at the gate. And what always capitalized dog? Did he really miss his dog? He could have brought his dog with him. And we're not sure if that's actually true. And 
Now I'm in the world alone upon the wide, wide sea. Well, there were others. We've been sailors on it, but okay. He's leaving those he knew. Um, he, he did have friends with him on some of these journeys. We certainly met some of them in Switzerland. I'm not particularly sure which particular journey to Europe this was. He spent a lot of time in Switzerland. Um, but why should I for others groan when none will sigh for me? So they won't miss him. He certainly had his enemies in Great Britain. He was a Whig, fairly radical Whig, um, wanted Catholic emancipation, which was kind of controversial amongst the Whigs and the Tories um, and various other reforms. Um, Perchance my dog will whine in vain until fed by stranger hands. So, so the dog's a complete tart, will take uh, food from anyone, not actually loyal. But ere I come back again, he'd tear me where he stands. Ere, E-R-E, -E, means before. But, I mean, if I come back again, uh, uh, then he would still bite me because he would have chosen a new master. With, uh, with my bark, bark in this case means boat. It doesn't mean a dog's noise. I'll swiftly go athwart the foaming brome. So it's going quickly. Athwart is against um, the foaming brine. So there is spume on the top of the salt water brine is salt water nor care what land thou bearest me to carries me to is to bear meaning to carry so the water is carrying him to wherever he's going whichever country the sea doesn't care where he's going uh and not again to mine he's never going to come back well he did come back he later went to greece and died at missalong he died of an illness welcome welcome ye dark blue waves so ye meaning you plural by the end of the 19th century it died out uh, Rudyard Kipling was the last person I can think of who used the word ye, you plural, very useful word which we don't have virtually every other language does have. And when you fail my sight, welcome ye deserts and ye, ye deserts and ye caves. So that's where he's going. And my native land, good night. So saying farewell to that. Okay, that's enough from me. Toodaloo.